Welcome to the Delvin Cox Experience, the podcast in which each week I'm on a one-man mission to United Coastal Diversity. I'm your host, Delvin Cox, and this week on the podcast, we have a returning guest. Let them know who you are, brother. Uh, my name is Brian. I've got a show called The Herfcast. It's uh, cigars and conversation, not necessarily about cigars, uh, and I like to throw in a race relations episode in there from time to time. So um, other than that, I generally stay away from politics, but sometimes I just like being a glutton for punishment, I guess. <laughs> What's going on, Brian, man? Everything good, brother? Yeah, man. Everything's been good. Um, you know, podcasting wise, kind of slow, but I mean, I, I don't let it take over my life. I just uh, do it when I can. So yeah, you're doing better than me at that then. <laughs> <laughs> As always, we like to start the podcast off with the five for five. Five questions, five asks to get the ball on the brown. Are you ready? Sure. Question number one. What is your favorite alcoholic beverage? Um, historically, statistically speaking, uh, numbers are going to show beer. Um, what kind of beer? But uh, Well, again, historically, it's going to be uh, – uh, you know, going playing the numbers game, it's going to be like light beer. It's going to take take the lifetime achievement award there. Um, Any particular brand? Uh, back in the day, it was Miller Lite. Now it's more of uh, stouts and porters um, are are what gets me going with a cigar when I'm not drinking some okay. kind of whiskey. Okay, okay, I like that. I like that. Question number two. Cats or dogs? Which one you like better? Uh, I got a husky. Uh, I've always been more of a dog person than a cat person. Uh, the husky was definitely a a challenge. We'll we'll say that. That's a cool animal, though. That's a cool yeah. pet to have. No, he he's cool. It just sucks when you get a a husky puppy when your son is only six months old. Oh god! But, uh, that that puppy is harder to take care of than the kid. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. Brutal. Definitely. Question number three. Give me your top five TV shows. Man, I'm not really that much of a TV guy. Um, let's see. In no particular order? No particular order. All right. Let's see. Uh, CSI Vegas. Um, I watched most of that. Um, I, di I didn't see anything with Ted Danson though. Um, okay. actually I didn't even finish up to where Grissom left. So yeah, I'm really behind in that, but I like that show. Um, Smallville was a good one. Yes. Um, interesting. You should say that one. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right. That works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, CSI Vegas, uh, Smallville friends, Okay. Mash. Um, I find I'll Mash think. interesting because Mash is like literally older than you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Like when I was growing up, rerun. Well, it, it's always been reruns for me. Yeah, um, at night. Yeah, but growing up, uh, you know, I enjoyed the show, even though I didn't understand the the entire context of it. And now, when I watch the show, it's like, oh man, like <laughs> I miss yeah. I miss so much of this as a kid, um, you know, which makes you appreciate it even more. Um, and then, um, man, I'm trying to find I'm trying to find a a left field to throw in for the last one. Pick a black show. You pick. Four of the whitest shows you can think about. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> good shows. All right, fine. In Living Color. There you go. That's a good one. That is a perfect answer. Uh, right? well, I guess that shows, uh, that shows my, my, my whiteness. Uh, the, the, <laughs> you pick the, Friends, the, CSI yeah. Vegas. <laughs> Which, uh, Friends, I didn't like. I, I used to make fun of a friend of mine. Cause she watched it all the time. It was like, get that shit out of here. And like, you know, I was living with my friend and his fiance and she was the one that always watched friends. And, uh, 
you know, I'm sitting there in the uh, the other half of the room, like reading my Harry Potter books because that's how cool I was. Damn right. And she'd be watching Friends, and I'd find myself laughing, you know, just from hearing the shit in the background. And uh, I was like, all right, fine. Give me the first disc of the first season, and I'll I'll try it out. Sure, shit. You know, all ten seasons done. I c- I couldn't get into it. I tried it too because people always recommend for some reason they always recommend me that show because I say I like Seinfeld. That Seinfeld is another good different one. Show. Two um, different shows. Yeah, but that's I I always hated the fact that I actually enjoyed watching Friends. I I hated that about myself. Ah, understand. <laughs> yeah, but question number four. Now that Disney Plus has dropped, if you get it, or when you get it, because Disney just owes all of us, what are the first show you're going to watch on it? Or movie, for that matter? Song of the South. I guarantee that's no way it's going to be oh, on I, it. I, I, I no way. I guarantee it's not going to be on there. But uh, if it was, like, I've, I've been dying to watch that again now that, like, it's, you know, again, when I was a kid, I didn't know shit. Um, and I, I do remember watching it growing up and I, I really want to see it again just to, uh, just to see exactly what is in there, you know, because obviously my, my mind, anybody's mind, it's, it's hard to remember back that far. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely interested to, to see it all over again. You know what I find interesting about that whole thing? The fact that for, for decades, that song has been synonymous with disney yeah like that whole theme that, that song and so many elements of that movie right there has been synonymous with disney and now it's just kind of like a race from existence completely yeah that's uh the only thing that you could find is that song just yeah the, the zippity zippity doo-dah. which i i wouldn't be surprised if you could find that on there somewhere maybe buried but that you know the whole thing i i don't know it, it's super fascinating that that yeah. that they kind of dug in so deep with Song of the South at this one point in time in history. Like I said, whether it's pulling songs from it and stuff like that, pulling elements from it and adding to other things. And now it's just kind of erased from history completely. Heckle and Jekyll wasn't uh, Disney, was it? I don't think it was. But I used to love Heckle and Jekyll, by the way. Yeah, so did I. But Yeah, that was, um, you know, that, that'd be another one to rewatch. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, now that I'm now thinking about it, I think you're probably right because I remember watching Heckle and Jekyll because they used to sell, I used to go to the flea market with my grandmother and they used to sell these um like $2 DVDs of VHSs. They had like 100 cartoons on it and Heckle and Jekyll was always on there. Heckle and Jekyll mm-hmm. and Popeye was always on there. Yeah. Well, I guess that answers our question because Popeye's definitely not Disney. Yeah, for, for, for sure. Well, well, shit, I don't, I don't know what all Disney owns, so I guess we can't, we can't really say that. <laughs> yeah, that is also true. <laughs> so. Question number five. If you could change the, your history and have any career job, anything you want to pick, what would it be? Uh, as cliche as it's going to sound, I wouldn't change anything. That's dope. That's I'm I'm happy with what I have. Um, I've I don't regret anything that I've ever done, as stupid as it may have been. Um, it's it's made me who I am today, and it's given me what I've got today. So yeah, even though I I do the epitome of the daily grind, I, I work my my forty forty eight hours a week uh, at the at the steel mill. Nothing glamorous, uh, you know. But I mean. It, I feel like if I if I go back and change anything, I'm not going to have the people in my life that I have in my life now. So, that's a good point. You probably would be podcasting. That's that. Yeah. Well, that that or that's all I would be doing. Yeah, that's that's also a point. Good point. So, man, what's been going on? A lot's been going on with you lately, to say the least, man. You've been re- recording sometimes. You did um episode with my boys. From Detroit, that was pretty cool. The what up, uh, the, podcast? Yep, that man. The the last, uh, with the exception of Pat McNamara, like the last four episodes that I've done have been three plus hours. Which so is crazy. 
And I've listened yeah. to some of those three plus hour episodes. Like, damn. Yeah. And, and, the, and the thing that I'm, I'm gonna give you props on is the fact that usually I bitch and complain about that. Like, god damn, in the fucking podcast. <laughs> yeah. But but in your case, I've actually listened to all those episodes. I'm like, this is still pretty good. It's actually solid. Yeah, that's I I definitely try to end it when it needs to be ended. Uh, I try not to go too far too long. I mean, that's, you know, with the Pat McNamara, it's only an hour, but uh, I mean, we, I probably had more time with them, but there was, you know, the conversation was running out and I was kind of blanking on some things. So it's like, all right, time, time to end this. Um, but yeah, what up though? Uh, I had another episode of Coffee Black and then most recently I did the, uh, the uh, Coffee Black and Daryl Davis and uh, before that, it like, well, I mean, shit. What up, though? I think was almost two months ago. Yeah, somewhere around there. So, yeah, I I haven't been that busy with it, but I guess when I am doing it, I'm I'm doing it for a while. So, but, you know, that, I think honestly, I think that's a good thing for your podcast because since it's like three, since each the episodes of late has been three hours, it kind of feels fresh. Yeah, like there's a um, gaming podcast that was, like I think it's called the Bombcast. It's pretty popular, but and they drop episodes like every other week or something like that. But the episodes were like three, four hours long, so it was super popular because people are just listening to those three, four hours. They're good for like two weeks or something like that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I I don't I don't force anything. Um, I, I'm not going to force somebody to come in here just so I can get an episode out. You know, I I, I talk to people when I could talk to them, so. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna, not gonna drag somebody into the garage here to, to bullshit about nothing. Yeah, that's good. That's definitely good. So how has it been, man, in terms of like building up this podcast? Cause I, I see you growing a little bit. I see you getting better guests. Not to say that, well, better is a kind of weird word. I want to say bigger guests in a sense. Yeah. And that's, uh. I mean, that's just a result of just throwing it out there, asking. Like, uh, I, I I sent my brother a screenshot the other day. I sent uh, Roseanne Barr a message on Facebook asking her if uh, she'd come on the show, which I'm sure she'll never see it. But when, um, you know, when she did her last episode with Rogan, she, you know, they started off with smoking cigars. It's like, oh, well, shit, there we go. If I could, uh, let's see, Roseanne's kind of fucking crazy, so... If she does happen to get this, maybe it'll be kind of that Bill Murray effect where, hey, randomly, you'll end up doing an episode with Roseanne Barr. So let me ask you this, then. When you look for a guest, what type of person you look for? What type of things you look for when you try to get a guest on the show? Like Roseanne Barr, for example. What would make you want to have her on the show? Because I think that's a fascinating interview as well. I'd probably well, have Roseanne on this show, so. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, whatever you know about Roseanne or whatever you think about Roseanne, like, you know, somebody asked me before, like, who would you want to talk to? I'm, I want to talk to everybody. You know, that's, uh, I, I like having the common ground of having a cigar there. You know, that's, that's always nice to have. But I mean, somebody like Daryl Davis, he doesn't drink or smoke cigars. So, I mean, on paper, that's not a good fit for this show. But again, like it's, it's not, it, it's, it's more conversation than cigar related. So, uh, but yeah, man, I, I just like to talk to everybody. Um, you know, e even Roseanne, like whatever, whatever her beliefs and opinions are, like whatever she's done, I'd still like to have that conversation and be like, so, uh, you know, why, you know, what, what's up with this? Why, why this, why that, you know, I always find people like that fascinating because people want to love or hate Roseanne bar. That's fine. But she actually reached like the top of the mountain in terms of fame. Like she had the biggest TV show at one point in time. And even when she came back before the whole controversy happened with her, it was becoming the biggest TV show again. Yeah. So it's not like her popularity waned until that whole situation happened with the whole thing that she did. Yeah, that's that's someone who has who has reached the pinnacle, hit rock bottom, reached the pinnacle again hit rock bottom again, and now climbing back up. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, a story like that has got to be fucking fascinating. Like, there, there's got to be something in there that's going to be, you know, interesting to listen to. 
Yeah, especially the whole because I know I know this happened to a lot of celebrities and things like that. You they have people who tell them what to say and what not to say. Yeah. And how to handle the situation. They have PR teams and stuff like that. And I think with her situation, it's it's clearly a thing where she wasn't listening to her PR team. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think her PR team is pretty much her 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 kids, her family. Yeah. That that's what it sounds like when, when she talks to Rogan anyway. Yeah, but it's it's super fascinating to hear those stories about the rise and fall and rise and get of celebrities and just the regular people for that matter. Because we've been living in an age of social media where it's just some guy on the street become popular for some dumb thing he does on the internet for five seconds. The next thing you know, his whole life is being kind of set to that standard. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, well, uh, have you heard anything from Perez Hilton at all lately? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know much about, about that character, but I know that all over the news for a little while and then all of a sudden just gone. Yeah, you know? that's, that's what that's, I was thinking. Like he, I've seen him recently on something, and he, but he doesn't look like the same. He lost a lot of weight. That was, that was the one that, was, that did the, uh, like, leave Britney alone, right? Or was that somebody else? No, Perez Hilton was the, that was somebody else. Perez Hilton was like the blogger or something like that. Like the style blogger who became famous, no. with the, like the gossip column and stuff. He was like a big thing at one point in time. Yeah, no, that's it shows you how much attention I pay to that shit. So. <laughs> yeah, sometimes my knowledge on pop culture is a hindrance to say the least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, I'm I'm kind of the the polar opposite to that. So. Let's get into it, man. You had Daryl Davis back on. What was that like having this? And for those who don't know, give him a short synopsis of who this man is, because this man is an amazing person. All right, so Daryl Davis, um, let's see, he's 61, 62 years old now, um, but he's a musician. Uh, he grew up all over the world, um, and he's a black man. Uh, he's traveled touring with like Chuck Berry, uh, a lot of musicians. He's played with a, a lot of like high profile, uh, musicians, um, Eric Clapton, like I said, Chuck Berry. Um, and, uh, he, he actually played the inaugural ceremony with, uh, with Bill Clinton. Uh, so he, he was actually playing with uh, Clinton while he was doing the sax, but, uh, he's a, he's a boogie woogie piano player. And, Early on in his life, uh, he was in the Cub Scouts and in a parade, and people started throwing bottles at him and whatnot. He was the only black kid in the parade, and he, was, he happened to be the color guard carrying the American flag. And he didn't understand why people were throwing shit at him. So when his parents told him, like explained to him racism, because like I said, he grew up um, you know, overseas and whatnot. Uh, I think his dad was an ambassador. Um, so once he learned about racism, you know, about why, he, you know, the, the question has been with him his entire life. How can you hate me if you don't even know me? Which, I mean, that, that's a, that's a question that everybody should ask everybody, you know, um, if, if you come across hatred like that, I mean, I don't know. I'm the type of person that, that likes to talk about shit like that. Like I said, I have, uh, I have the random race relations episodes every once in a while. Um, but long story short, uh, he, he's gotten over 200 members of the KKK to, uh, denounce their membership and hand over their robes. Um, uh, not all of them handed them their robes, but they all left the KKK and he does have quite the collection of robes of all sorts, uh, from all different areas of the country, from different chapters of the, the KKK. And one day he wants to open up a museum with that stuff. So, uh, he's just, he's just a person that he doesn't put himself out there. Like he's not looking for like any type of like notoriety or fame from this. He just does it because he's, he, he likes to have that conversation and he gets a thrill out of, you know, that, that point where you, you could take somebody's hood and put it in the trunk of your car because they decided to leave. Like they decided to change the way that they feel about another race, you know, taking that hatred 
and turning it into a friendship like that. That's what fuels him. That's, that's what gets him going. And like, he's just the type of person that I think should be blasted all over social media. Uh, instead of the, instead of the divide and conquer agenda that most of the media outlets have, uh, he's somebody who is bringing people together and not enough people talk about him. in, in my opinion. Well, let me ask you this. Why do you think that's not talked about as much as it should be? Because what he's doing is a very noble thing and it's a very thankless job. And as you know, the whole thing with me has always been you too, for that matter, to kind of unite the culture through diversity in terms of we will talk to anybody and we will have conversations with anybody, whether it's about race or whatnot, and sit down and discuss why they feel the way they feel. So why wouldn't we have conversations like that? It's not always well received or it doesn't get the attention that it deserves for that matter. Uh, that's, I actually asked him when, when I, when I did the most recent episode with him, if he thought that, uh, you know, cause like I said, it's, it's the divide and conquer agenda. And, you know, I asked him if, if he thinks that like part of the reason why his story doesn't get told more often on, on more on, on, on wider platforms is if he thinks that, uh, you know, cause I mean, this is what I think, uh, but I, I asked him if he thought that it was because it wasn't the the divide and conquer; it was the bringing people together. Um, which I mean, he he couldn't really answer that. But in my opinion, I think that that has something to do with it because if you look at it, all the heartwarming stories and the the do good stories uh, they last they last five minutes on the front page, if it even gets there. Whereas anything bad, anything negative. Uh, especially anything black versus white uh you're you're gonna see that plastered all over every every media outlet for for as long as they could milk it yeah i agree so do you think that happens because we feed into it or do you think that's just us being manipulated in terms of the system itself because i look at it in two ways i feel like sometimes we feed into the nonsense that happens and sometimes i feel like we're getting manipulated and to believe one thing well, that may or may not be true or it may not be the whole story. No, I, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think that we're, uh, cause I mean, you know, the Facebook algorithms, it, it's going to feed you what you click on the most. Uh, and what everybody clicks on the most is, is the, is the negative shit. Um, but I, I also think that uh, due to that, I mean, we're, we're kind of doing it to ourselves you know, following all the, all the outrage and all of those stories, instead of taking the time to find the positive stories and, and go with that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. So how different would it be? Just, just a rhetorical question that if the media that we had today just was a little bit more even with their stories in terms of, we're going to talk about some negative stuff. We're also going to talk about a lot of positive stuff that's happening. How different do you think that would have, have an effect on our society? I think it'd be major. Um, I mean, especially with, uh, you know, the way that everyone perceives police officers, cops, pigs, you know, whatever you want to call them. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you they're all great. Uh, there's bad ones out there, but um, I, I can't remember the guy's name. But, I mean, one, one of the stories, it's, it's another one where, I mean, the video went viral a little bit, but, but not for long, but the, uh, there's a, there's a police officer, I believe it's Orlando or Jacksonville. I can't remember. I think it's Jacksonville. Um, but he pulled up on, on some neighborhood kids playing basketball. Uh, the neighbors called a noise complaint on him, And, uh, you know, this guy shows up, there's, it's just kids playing basketball. So we started playing with them, you know, and then, uh, a while later, uh, kind of the same thing. There was a group of kids out there playing basketball and, you know, this guy brought back up, you know, he brought more guys from the police department to play basketball with these kids and, uh, you know, kind of a, a positive story, but he also brought with him Shaquille O'Neal. That's cool. And, you know, so they did, uh, they did like a five on five with, uh, officers, Shaq and these kids. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's another one of those positive stories that you just don't see enough of. But, I mean, and, and rightfully so, I mean, the, the police brutality cases, those do need, uh, you know, as much media as we could get. But I just wish that there would be 
you know, some for the positive side too. Yeah. I always feel like with the police brutality cases, a lot of people get mad, especially African-Americans. We get mad because we often don't see people getting outraged at it. Yeah. Like it's one thing you see black people getting outraged at it because that's what we do. But getting everybody else behind it, that's, that's the, that's the issue. Like not, I mean, all right. So getting white people to see it the way that you see it, um, you know, and that's, I, I think that's very important. And that's, that's why, I mean, the reason I started doing the race relations episodes was I, I got a hold of Coffee Black after the uh, Van Dyke trial. And, you know, I told him, I said, look, man, I'm just the, I'm just the average ignorant white guy. I want to hear your side of the story. Cause this is after he was, uh, after the verdict came down that he was guilty uh, for a uh, second degree murder instead of first degree murder, you know? So, yeah, uh, rightfully so. I think uh, I think everybody should be outraged at at the brutality cases, but I also think that everybody should know that it's not all of them. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, you know, uh, still. I, I guess it's uh, respect until shown that you shouldn't respect. Um, but and then on on the other side of that. Like, you know, from, from talking to coffee, you know, he put it the way it's, uh, you know, he asked me, he's like, you know, when you see a, when you see a police car drive by in the opposite direction, you know, you pass him up, like, you know, what do you think? You know, all right. Yeah. I make sure I got my seatbelt on. I look at the speedometer. Well, when it happens to most black men, it's, oh shit, is he going to turn around and is he going to harass me? And I get that. Like, it's, it's something that, it's one of those things that should not be a fucking issue, but it is. Yeah. I you think, know, <laughs> and it, it, I know it's kind of cliche to say that, but that's kind of the whole thing about white privilege. You don't realize you have it until you see somebody who don't have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest problems in America that we have today in terms of our relationship, race relations and culture that we don't see in terms of people don't see enough of the things that, Black people don't see enough of the things that white people are seeing, and white people don't see enough, enough of the things that black people are seeing that's happening to each other. Yeah. In terms of, as a black man, we see white people think they just have it all good, there's nothing wrong with their lives. We don't see the poverty that some of these neighborhoods they go into, going home to the things that they're dealing with. So yeah. when we hear them complaining about, hey, I'm struggling out here too, we don't really see that. But on the other side, we see young black men not getting to see 30 years old, getting killed by police officers or, or other nefarious ways. And we're like, hey, why is nobody trying to say, bring light to this? And we're like, and nobody's really answering back to it. Why is nobody like seeing that this is a big problem? And I think that's where the kind of disconnect really comes from with these type of situations. Yeah. So let me ask you about this. What did you learn from this whole situation now with Daryl Davis having more now that you didn't know before? Uh, I guess first off, uh, in, in the first one that we did with them, um, I, I learned that, uh, you know, the, you know, he mentioned, uh, one of his stories about, uh, sitting and talking to a man and, you know, he ended up pulling out his card for the, for the KKK, his KKK membership card. Uh, he, he was a card carrying member and I, I had no idea that, uh, the KKK had membership cards. Um, it just doesn't seem like the the type of thing that you would want to accidentally leave somewhere, uh, for a secret society. Um, but, uh, I mean, other than that, uh, just, uh, you know, a little bit about music. Um, you know, his, his knowledge in music is, is pretty profound. Um, so I mean, listening to him talk about, uh, you know, like Chuck Berry's roots, uh, you know, how, how, you know, even, even Elvis gives credit to Chuck Berry, but, most other people don't give credit to him. You know, everybody gives credit to, to Elvis as being the king of rock and roll when, uh, you know, when everybody has Chuck Berry to thank, to thank for that, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, conversations like that. Um, you know, he, he has a story about getting a, a bottle of Hennessy. Daryl Davis doesn't drink, uh, but he got a, He got a bottle of Hennessy handed to him from, uh, from Eric Clapton. Uh, you know, for, I think it was, uh, from Eric Clapton to Chuck Berry to Daryl Davis, I think is the, the, the way that it ended up going. But 
I mean, stuff like that's always always fun to hear. And it's it's an it's an old school bottle of Hennessy too. So it was uh it, it was cool to hear about that. So so let me ask you this: When you do these series on race, race relations, what goes through your mind when you hear some of these stories that? are coming out like Daryl Davis's mouth or Coffee Black. And how do you think it affects you as a person hearing these, the other side of things and kind of you guys all sitting there comparing and contrasting everything? Well, I mean, I, I go into it with a, as open of a mind as I possibly can. And I mean, I, I've learned a lot. Like hearing, I think that that's a conversation that, that a lot of people need to have because hearing the other side, just, just sitting down across the table from somebody and just having that conversation does just an absolute world of good. Um, you know, it's not, it's not just keyboard arguing. Uh, it doesn't get out of control like that. I mean, obviously a conversation can, but if you go into it with an open mind, you learn. So, I mean, that, that's, that's my, my whole intention. And, you know, uh, it, it really has opened up my eyes to, to the things like, you know, when, when a, when a squad car drives the other way or, uh, you know, the, 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 the stories of, of the clan and, um, you know, just, uh, the, the different experiences that, that I've never had to live through and I probably will never live through, hopefully. Um, you know, it, it's, it's good to hear that side of everything. Yeah, I agree. That makes sense. I, I always say that it's important to hear, both sides of the story because you don't know what you're missing. You, to get a full story, you need to hear both experiences so you can kind of add them together and come to your own conclusion. Like a couple of weeks ago, I had somebody on my podcast. His name's Greg. He has a podcast called Pilot Says. And he's a pastor. And he's also, if I'm correct, he's a Trump supporter. But what's, what was fascinating about that conversation is that he, he was laid back about everything. He explained his points and he got his points across and there was never an argument or anything like that. And I think it's very important to have conversations with people you may not necessarily agree with 100% on things to learn why they feel the way they feel and to help you understand so you can make a better sense of the, of the conversation. Well, yeah. I mean, if you sit, if you sit in an echo chamber, you're not going to learn anything. You're just going to reinforce your beliefs and ideas that you've already got, your preconceived notions. Like you're just going to feed into that. But if you talk to the opposition, that's when you learn. That's when, you know, that, that's when you learn knowledge. That's where you learn tolerance. That's, that's where you learn a lot. Yeah, and I think it's another important aspect of that is just knowing that you don't have to come away from an agreement on everything. And that's a very important aspect that we kind of make the mistake on. Like, sometimes we're just not going to come to a conclusion, and that should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, agree to disagree. Uh, you know, that's a, it, it's a term my four-year-old doesn't understand, but it's something I tell him all the time. You know, all right, bud, we got we to gotta agree to disagree on this one. You know, no, I, I don't think we're going to the store. Um, but no, it, it's okay to disagree with people. That's, uh, I mean, I, I, the, same, the, the same holds true for me with, with religion, politics, homosexuality, whatever. Uh, do what you do, man. I'm, I'm never going to try to change your beliefs in that. I'm never going to tell a gay guy, no, nah, dude, you should totally be chasing poon. Uh, that, that's not cool. Um, no, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to sit here and tell a Catholic, no, you need to become Jewish. You know, I'm never going to, I'm never going to do anything like that. As long, like, as long as everybody respects my side, I'll sit here and debate all night long about what I see in this religion or, um, you know, why I don't like dudes. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about it all night long, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and try to force your opinion. Um, yeah. But I, I'm going to come away learning different perspectives and probably having a deeper respect for, for that person. Yeah. Good answer. I like that. So let's not necessarily switch gears a little bit, but let's talk about something a little different. Who are your dream guests to have on your podcast? Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, Arnold. That's Arnold's he, he's a, he's a big cigar smoker. Um, so that's, that's definitely, um, 
one of the tops. Uh, if I could, if I could ever get Daryl to smoke a cigar, that, that would be, that would be a feat. Cause, uh, like I said, he's not a smoker, not a drinker. Um, uh, he, he told me that he wouldn't smoke a cigar, but doesn't mean I'm going to stop trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see. There's Stallone, somebody out there. Yeah, there is. I mean, Stallone's another, another big name. Um, but I don't know, industry wise, like I, I would like to sit down with Skip Martin uh, from Roma. Uh, I always enjoy sitting down with, uh, Risty from JSK. Um, one of the, one of the guys that I need to, uh, I need to get together with, um, we're, which is nice cause we're actually kind of local, but I need to get big Haas. Uh, we're, we're supposed to meet up somewhere big Haas from a uh, VFW or VFU, uh, voice from the underground podcast. Uh, he, he's a cigar smoker and yes, he is um cool dude, dude by the way yeah really really good dude um i i, I definitely want to get get together with him and do a podcast with him or just or just sit and bullshit you yeah, know i think i'm supposed to be on voice for the underground thing next week i think I, i'm gonna be on that show yeah i was i was listening to their episode today they said they got you uh next week yeah there you, there you go so, so. <laughs> that answered that question <laughs> <for me. laughs> but yeah i like those guys those guys are really cool man i like going to this show and stuff like that yeah those are some good choices. But, uh, but I mean, like I said earlier, man, I, I want to talk to everybody. Um, you know, a- anybody who I could get in here or, or get on the computer to, to have a good conversation with, that's, that's all I'm looking for. All right. I'm going to give you two, two people because I already know my answer. I think I've said it on here before. Would you sit down and talk with Donald Trump? Yes. Barack Obama? Absolutely. What would be the first question you'd ask either one of them, or both of them? Matter of uh, fact, let's, let's let's do a triple threat. Both of them in a room together with you on the cast. What would be the first question you ask either one of them? I mean, the first question I'm going to ask, obviously, is what are we smoking? Uh, you know, what kind of, what kind of cigars <laughs> are we lighting up? Like um, um, man, I I don't know. I I think I I would have to ask Obama, like, what was the first thought in your head when when uh, you found out that. Trump was going to become president, which would make it all the better with them sitting next to each other. Yeah. I, that's the interview that I think people need to get. Whoever yeah. can, can pull that off after Trump's presidency, because I, 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 it's seriously that it's going to happen now, obviously, but after his presidency, after everything dies down, to have both of them in a room together, just interview both of them at the same time would be fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I think Trump, I'd probably just like, Man, why are you so fucking reckless? Yeah, that's a that'll be an interesting answer to hear. Yeah, um, you know, just uh, just try to get that, find out that thought process if there if there is any like thought process behind it, or if it's all just uh, on a whim, uh, no filter, just fucking. Which I'm assuming that's what it is. But um, yeah, man. Uh, what, what did you think about the Don getting elected? And, um, you know, why, why are you so reckless? I think, I think that would probably be the, the opening questions. So do you think he's going to get impeached? I'm just straight up asking. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I mean, the, the, the house has enough votes for impeachment, but he, he's not going to get left out of office because the Senate's still, the holds the power there yeah, yeah. so i guess in, impeached yes but uh removed no yeah that's what i think was probably gonna happen too as well i think he he's probably gonna get impeached but i don't think he's gonna get removed from office especially with this time frame that it is now like election year is literally next year and that's not that mm-hmm. far away so an impeachment is a yeah. long process i don't think people understand it. impeachment takes a long time so it's more than likely he can get voted out or step down before he can even get impeached. Yeah, that's uh, which I, I don't think that he'll get voted out. Uh, it, it seems like there's there's too much going on with the with the Democratic Party to, you know, get their shit together before the time comes. Yeah, uh, more think, people are throwing think, their hats in the election, which is crazy. Yeah, they're you're you're going to have way too many swing votes 
in in multiple directions uh, that that's going to take away from from the main vote, which sucks that it's just a fucking two party system, you know. Yeah. But uh, until until everybody wisens up, uh, or we get a a third candidate that is that is worth a damn that could actually take enough votes uh you know we're we're kind of stuck with it until everybody wakes up do you think an independent can ever win the election like eventually because that's you know like i said uh eventually like eventually people are going to which i mean the the whole trump thing is doing good for that i guess uh making everybody realize man this guy sucks and this guy sucks um uh, fuck what do we do uh yeah. All right. Well, there's there's this guy over here, or or girl, or non-binary, whatever. Um, you know, well, well. I mean, until until that happens, uh, which I think it's probably going to be sooner or later, or sooner than later, um, that we actually see a viable third party. But I think it's still going to be a really long time till that third party gets elected. Yeah, I think you're you're right enough. There was shades of that with Ross Perot, if I remember correctly. Yep. So it'd be really fascinating to see if something like that could happen again. Shoot, well, I think I think I think it was I think it was almost starting to happen with Gary Johnson. I think Gary Johnson was starting to get a following, and then uh, that kind of fell apart right before the election, if I if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think I think you're right on that. But. Yeah, politics is definitely not my strong suit. So uh, that's I, you know, I could, I could give uh, short answers, but I'm not going to be able to explain everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me ask you this: What do you do when you unwind? I want to know because we always talk about this politics. We always talk about all these things and political issues and things like that. What is Brian doing just to kick back and relax? You don't watch TV, you said, essentially. Well, I mean, you're you're basically looking at it. Uh, I've got I got a uh, Roma Craft Wonderlust Fiorella uh, limited edition uh, that I'm smoking. I have no clue what uh, that is. <laughs> it's it's a it, it's it's a it's a damn good cigar, is what it is. Uh, but I had to order it from Germany because they're not available in the U.S. Uh, I'm gonna ask a so, weird question. What yeah. does it taste like? Uh, well, it tastes like a cigar. <laughs> uh, this, this, this one, in, this one in particular, um, I've got now a, a beginner isn't going to taste all the different notes. Uh, I still don't get all the notes that I, I see some people, which I think some of it's marketing bullshit, but, uh, this one, it's, this is a, like a medium cigar, medium to full. Uh, and it's pretty smooth, uh, pretty easy to smoke, uh, with, with a bolder flavor profile, but I mean, it's got some, some like wood tones to it. Um, a little bit of like black coffee and, um, Uh, just a, a little bit of pepper on a retro hail with the retro hail is when you, when you blow it up, you, you don't inhale the cigar, but after you draw it in, you could push it through your nostrils and you know, the, the, the nose, you get a lot of your flavor profiles from, from smell. Um, uh, but there, there's more pepper like black pepper on the, on the retro hail, which, you know, gives it just a little bit of, a little bit of spice. Okay, so, so I just, I'm trying to be clear. You said you don't inhale the cigar. Yeah. So how do you smoke it again? You just draw on it, draw on it. You 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 have the smoke in your mouth, and you just blow it out. Um, you know, like I said, you it's getting those like you're you're still getting nicotine. You know, absorbed it through your mouth, um, but you know, just th those different flavor profiles that you could get. Uh, makes it enjoyable. I'm quite sure there's somebody out there who's tried to smoke a cigar before and tried to inhale it and literally coughed up their lung. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, 
I actually, uh, I was I was working on the the garage or studio uh, this afternoon, um, and I wasn't paying attention. I was I was smoking a cigar and I um, I accidentally uh, took a breath before it was all out of my mouth, and you know had. Had a had a good cough going for for a few seconds there. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't sound fun at all. But um, yeah, man, I I like to I like to sit back, some wine, relax, um, a cigar, and usually a a bourbon or a scotch. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, the beers. Um, which I I, I was IPA for for a long time. Uh, but with the cigars, it's uh, porters for the most part. Porters and uh, some some stouts sprinkled in there a little bit. Okay, I actually know what most of that stuff means, so that's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's that, and usually a uh, usually a video chat's going on, whether it be a podcast or just talking to friends, because uh, friends of mine from Cigar Geeks. Uh, we, we get on and do, uh, you know, we call them Google herfs, uh, virtual herf where it's just, uh, you know, video chat like this, where we all smoke cigars and bullshit with each other. So, well, that's pretty dope. So where can everybody find you at to go check out your podcast or don't you have a, like, um, what do they call it for the c- 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 no, I'm losing my voice. Cigar smokers. I forgot what it's called. What? Will y'all hang what? out? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, cigargeeks.com is a, is a good website. It's a good forum uh, with a great community. Um, you know, I, I learned more. I, I've been on Cigar Geeks for like, I don't know, probably like 10 years now. But I learned more in my first two weeks uh, than I did like six, seven years previous um, from that community. And since then, like every year, uh, we get together, you know, there's a small group of us that gets together. Somebody hosts it. Like I've been to uh, Houston, Philly, Pittsburgh. Um, let's see, I hosted one year. And next year we're going to uh, Minneapolis, uh, our once a year gathering where where we get together and, and meet up and whatnot. But uh, that's that, that's a good place. Uh, if you're if you're getting into cigars, uh, if you want to learn, there's there's some good uh, um like trades and sales and, and whatnot going on there too. Uh, so, but, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's an old school internet forum. Um, you know, you got, you got 10 or 12 topics that, that are on the, on the front and they get pushed down once, uh, you know, if they're not popular anymore. So, okay. But, so uh, can they find your podcast at, they find uh, your cigar geeks dot com on the Herbcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the herfcast.com is my website. I've got a store there. I've got links to the CRA. If, uh, you know, the Cigar Rights of America, um, you become a member of the Cigar Rights of America to uh, help the help with the fight of the FDA is what's going on now. Um, you know, the, 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 the ban on premium cigars and vape and, and oh, shit like that. It's, see, I didn't uh, know this. We could talk about this right now. Well, it's uh, explain what's going on because I, I knew it was vape. I know it's, it's about premium cigars as well. It, it, it's not really a ban on premium cigars, but it's uh, trying to regulate premium cigars. Uh, the FDA is basically, uh, I think the the short of it is basically the FDA per per cigar that a company wants to put out after a certain date, uh, which was you know a couple years past now, uh, but they want to have each cigar sent in to be tested. Uh, and if you know cigars at all, I could have one line of cigars. You know, we'll say uh, Jassim Kral, for example. Uh, Jassim Kral's Red Knight, his, his core line. Um, you know, that's one blend of tobacco, but he's got, say, five different sizes of that cigar, where it's all the same blend, just different length different width um so he would have to send in one of each of those cigars at roughly two hundred thousand dollars a piece to get tested wow so just for just for his core line it would be a million dollars 
to have those tested to be able to put them on the shelf. And for a small company like that, that's devastating. It's brutal. It's 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 door closing is what it is. Um, which is it's a real shame because a, a premium cigar has one ingredient. It's tobacco. Now there's different kinds of tobacco, but when's all when all is said and done, it's tobacco. That's it. It's it's tobacco leaves rolled up that you light and you enjoy. That's so, crazy. So with uh, you know, there's there's no additives. Uh, so it's it's ridiculous that that they're trying to require this testing, and it goes a lot deeper than that. And I'm not as educated as I should be on the topic. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's not looking good for small companies, and that that's a shame. So that's where you know the CRA comes in, and uh, I think it's 25 bucks for a year. Uh, but that money goes straight to, you know, like lobbying against the FDA. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's important in the, in the cigar community and the, you know, to keep, to keep the small companies like uh, JSK, Roma Craft, um, Patina. Uh, Patina is another great small company that, uh, you know, like these companies are, are probably going to have to close their doors or go exclusively overseas to stay in business if, if these FDA the regulations same. pass. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating to say at least that this, because of regulations and stuff like that, is literally going to put Chicago companies out of business. Yeah, and that's, that's U.S. companies. Um, you know, like JSK is, is local to me. Uh, he's right down the road. Uh, Roma Craft is Texas. Patina is, uh, I want to say, Illinois. Um, so, I mean, these are these are U.S. jobs, U.S. businesses that are going to be shut down if if the FDA has their way. So, yeah, that sounds nuts to say the least. But um, as far as yeah, like I said, the so you could find the CRA on my website. Um. You could you could stop by the store. I've got shirts, uh, stickers, whatnot. Um, I have a link to my Patreon, but uh, my podcast can be found just about anywhere podcasts are found. Um, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Podcast Addict, uh, pretty much everywhere except for the uh, the exclusive providers. That's great, man. Thank you for having you on, brother. You've been awesome. Can I have you on uh, again? Eventually, I'm gonna smoke a cigar and cough all hey, my life. Hey, that that's uh well. I mean, if you don't inhale, you're not gonna cough. Um, <laughs> but I mean, in, in all reality, like I I could I could care less about self promotion. Um, I I really just want the word to get out, and I want people to start spreading the word of Daryl Davis. Um, that that's that's the main reason that 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 I wanna I wanted to talk tonight is to to help get his name out there to help you know, get people to start spreading, you know, the, the positivity that this man brings to the world. Um, so, uh, yeah, if, if you're listening, uh, you know, check out, I've, I've done two episodes of Daryl Davis. Um, check those out. Uh, you could find a, a really bad version of his documentary on YouTube. If you searched for uh, accidental courtesy, like somebody posted the, the documentary, but it's got graphics and shit, but uh, you you could you could still watch it, so that that's good. Um, but it's it's a good watch. It's from 2016. Um, but uh, it's a good documentary watch. Daryl Davis, he's a stand-up dude, and I think more people need to know about him, and more people need to see that positivity instead of all of the negative bullshit that we're surrounded with. I agree, definitely. Anybody who's listening to this podcast right now, Google Daryl Davis. Listen to the Herf Calf episodes so you can get kind of an idea of who he is and how important he is for that matter. Yeah, just what he's about. Yeah, definitely. Thank That's, you for coming uh, on, Brian. Oh, absolutely, ahead, man. Thank you. Uh, uh, no, I, I was just going to say, um, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Uh, the first episode that I did with him, it's, it's kind of weird having a black man invite you to a Klan rally. Um, yeah. I so that. that's yeah. He, he, 
he told me, he said, well, I, I could set it up and, you know, we could, we could go to one. I said, I, you know, I don't know if I'd be able to, and I thought about it. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure if you could do it, I could do it. You know, it's like, how, how do I tell, how do I tell him? No, I can't go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, really just, just check this dude out. Uh, he's on, he's on Twitter, Instagram, all that. Like I said, he doesn't, he doesn't do any self promotion at all. He, he goes around and he lectures and whatnot. Um, but like that, that just goes to show what kind of person he is. Like, he's not looking for, for anything out of it just to, just to change people's minds and, you know, make the world a better place. And yeah. I definitely want to do whatever I can to help him grow and get that message out there. Yeah. That's a perfect place to end this. And I'm just going to say this. We need more people like Daryl Davis out there. Yes, we do. Definitely. As always, Devil Cactus Spirits, we are out. Peace.